Vanguard. Hey everybody, Nate Lee here, and I'm reviewing my brand new bow. I got this a week ago. It's an Arcos Brazil, and it is made in Brazil, and it's replacing, well, adding to my collection, but it's become my main bow. So I guess you could say replacing my trusty old Coda Classic that I've been using for 18 years. So most of my professional career on this one bow and the Coda Classic, you can't get any more. It's a great bow and they discontinued these probably 10 years ago and I've worn the finish off of it and stuff. And it's a good bow, but I wanted to go back to a Pernambuco bow and so I talked to my friend Megan Lynch Chowning, who is an amazing world-class fiddle player. So I asked her, what should I get? You know, I'm not looking to spend a ton of money right now. I just want a decent to good Pernambuco bow. And Megan recommended the Arcos Brazil bows. So I looked into them and actually had a lot of trouble finding this one. And the reason for that is that the laws around Pernambuco have changed. And my understanding is right now, bow makers have halted sending in new bows to the U.S. until it becomes more clear what the protocols are. So there's some that are here already, but not a lot of people have these Arcos Brazil bows available. And I would guess that most Pernambuco bows are a little hard to find right now. The makers are all scrambling to find out what else could they use. Uh, but for now, there's some bows here, uh, some bows left in the U.S. And I found one. So this is the Arcos Brazil Silver, and it's a really good bow. And there, I really didn't understand how Arcos Brazil worked when I first looked into them. And I searched and searched. Their website doesn't really explain it. I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I encountered J.S. Fisher Violins out of Pennsylvania, who had this one for sale. And Jim at J.S. Fisher Violins, I believe he is the J of J.S. Fisher, <laughs> Um, Jim explained to me how it works. So I'm going to give you the short version, which is that they have a lot of makers there at Arcos Brazil. It's a collective of makers and they make their bows. And when a bow is finished, it's graded. And based on its grade, it is given one of the model names. So the lowest model is the Arcos Brazil Nickel. And this one here that I have is the Arcos Brazil Silver. It then goes on up. They have these other bows called the Special Edition, and there's a gold and some really, really nice and expensive looking bows. I got this one because it was in the price range I was looking to spend. It was $900. You might be able to pick one up a little cheaper. I saw them advertised a little cheaper, but not available anywhere. So if you shop around, you might pick it up cheaper, but they're hard to find. So. I was happy to pay $900 for this one and I got it on trial first, which they will do. And so I got it on trial, pretty sure I was going to keep it. And as soon as I tried it within minutes, I knew I was going to keep the bow. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this bow and then I'm going to play it a bunch. So this is a Pernambuco bow and it's pretty standard looking. It has the, I'm not sure if this is mother of pearl or abalone, but it has that. And a really cool design here where it's actually octagonal right in here. It's hard to get a focus on this. Okay, still not great focus, but if you see that little shiny line there in the stick, <laughs> right around there, you can see the bow a little bit. See the bow is octagonal there. And then right around here, it turns into a round stick, which I thought was really cool. Um, I think it looks really nice. The Coda I've had for a long time turns octagonal right here. And this is what I'm used to seeing, but this I thought was a really neat design. And I was glad to find the round, a round sticked bow. I just like how they look. Uh, nothing against the octagonal at all. And from what I've read, there's not a whole lot of difference in the performance you get from one to another. If you have a preference, tell me why below in the comments. Uh, tell me what you like and why. So pretty standard. It's got the leather grip here and the silver winding here. So my understanding is that all of the silver looking things on this bow are silver. But as I mentioned, it's really hard to find any information at all on their website. So every Arcos Brazil bow is stamped with the maker. So this one says M. Pereira. And sorry, Marcos, the builder, I've, I've I rehearsed your name pronunciation on YouTube. 
using one of those pronunciation channels, um, but I'm still not getting it right. So M. Pereira is Marcos Pereira das Neves, and he is one of their, uh, as far as I can tell, one of their more experienced bow builders. And the only reason I think that this bow isn't the top tier is that the Pernambuco probably isn't top tier wood. But it sure looks like top tier craftsmanship to me. So that's it for the bow. Um, oh, and it's 60.2 grams because I know some people are going to ask. So it's 60.2 grams. And now I'm just going to go ahead and play it a little bit. As I go, I'll tell you what I like about it. So the first thing I really liked about it is that it's easy for me to make a warm tone. And with some bows, I don't. And I need all the help I can get. I want to sound really warm. So I don't like to choose gear that makes sounds that aren't that way because I don't want to have to work extra hard to make a nice tone. So with this bow, I like that it had a good weight in the middle of the stick in the tip. With some bows, they're so light in the tip that you have to use a lot of pressure to keep a grip on the string and you can end up with some unwanted small amount of this sound. Now sometimes we want that. But you want it to be on purpose and not something you have to compensate for constantly. So I like that about the bow. I also like that it's not too tip heavy. So a lot of bows I pick up. And when I go to chop, they are too tip heavy. And so I can barely move the bow where I want because the tip of the bow is pulling on my hand the whole time. And this one is not like that. And it works great for, you know, I like to use a lot of different types of chops. And it works really, really well for all of them. By the way, if you're into the chopping thing, I'm in the middle right now of my Fiddle Chop Shop workshop. It's a chopping workshop where I show you everything that you need to know and, and more. <laughs> I show you everything I know about the chop. And we're two sessions in, but they're all recorded. So there's one more session coming up Monday. This, uh, what is the date? Well, this is being released on the 4th, I think, is when we'll make it. And then... 5th, 6th, 7th, the 7th, I guess, <laughs> is the third installment of the class. So if you sign up now, you can watch the third installment live and you'll get the first two on video along with the PDFs and you can download the video and keep it forever. You'll also get access to my portal where you can stream those videos as well. And that part is included in the, the fee for the workshop. All right, so back to playing. Sign up for the workshop. The link is below. All right, so I like the chopping sound of it quite a bit. Um, something I want to point out is that listening to me play here is not a great indicator of how the bow sounds unless you've watched a lot of my other videos. So go watch some of those videos. But also my microphone is a lot farther away than normal, and hopefully I'm getting... <laughs> audio that works here, but with the tripod setup I'm using right now, the mic that is clamped to my desk couldn't quite reach. So if I keep using this configuration, I'll have to move the mic, but it seems to be picking things up okay. And we'll see. Uh, so watch some of my other videos to compare, but really the sound that you're hearing come out isn't necessarily what you should even be listening to to figure out whether you want to get a bow like this. It really is all about what sound comes out when you pick it up and bows that really what makes a good bow is so subjective and how much you can spend on a bow is a lot. So this bow for 900 I feel like gives me a lot of great stuff considering I've been playing on a carbon fiber bow that was 750 18 years ago then we're talking about a carbon fiber bow that's somewhere in the same range as this and I felt like this was a significantly better bow. 
So it's, I think, worth checking out, but don't just take my word for it. Sound like LeVar Burton, The End of Reading Rainbow. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> so anyway, don't just take my word for it. Try one. And if you come to one of my workshops live or one of my shows, I'd be happy to show you what it looks like and stuff. If you come to one of my workshops, I'll even let you try it. All right, so I'm going to play a little bit more. about rosin when I got this bow I asked Jim at JS Fisher violins what rosin did you put on it and it actually I didn't have this in mind and I was reading the information on his website he's got really good information on there about what to look for in bows based on your style and all that kind of stuff and I hadn't really thought about the rosin thing and he mentioned in on his site that you should try it first with the rosin he puts on it so that he knows you're trying the same thing that left his shop instead of just putting your rosin on and your rosin really does make a big difference in tone so i did what he said i tried it and then i messaged him and i said hey what rosin are you using and he is using baker's rosin which he told me and i've verified this is un unobtainable <laughs> pretty much you have to get on a wait list for it and i've heard it can even be years before you get one. So I'm getting on the wait list, uh, but he said in the meantime that he recommended Leatherwood Supple. So I picked up one. I normally use this Gustav Bernadelle, and it's a very well-respected rosin. So I'm actually giving away a Gustav Bernadelle rosin. So sign up with the form down in the description, and if your name comes up, I will mail you a brand new Gustav Bernadelle rosin. Now, the Leatherwood Supple that Jim recommended is a much more expensive rosin. You know, the Bernadelle is a very well-respected rosin, but it is also an inexpensive rosin, which is something I really like about it. You can spend a lot of money on rosin, and the Bernadelle is under $15, and I like it as well as a lot of really expensive rosins I've tried. The Leatherwood Supple is not cheap. <laughs> So I paid $69.50, I think it was, for this, or $67, $67.50 maybe, plus tax. And I just drove up today, actually, and picked it up at Carriage House Violins about an hour from my house. I wanted to pick one up in person because it's been kind of hot. I didn't want to have one shipped out and risk it getting kind of messed up. I really wanted to do the best test I could, and uh, putting it in a hot mail truck wasn't how I wanted to start out. So there is a review of the Leatherwood Supple coming up. So this is Leatherwood Bespoke is the brand. And it's handmade rosin. I'll know more about it when I do that video because I haven't studied up on it a lot. I just bought it based on Jim's recommendation because he said it was a lot like the rosin that was on my bow that I liked so much. By the way, since then, I have been using the Gustav Bernadelle and I still really like it on this bow. I gigged with it last week. And it really sounds great with the Bernadelle. This has been my rosin for a very long time. So who knows if I like the Leatherwood Supple, but I thought I'd take one for the team and try it out and do a review for you all. It looks pretty fancy. There's two recipes that I'm aware of. The Crisp, I believe it's called, and the Supple. And the Supple is their warmer one. So keep an eye out for that video soon. I'll probably put out a Nandolin video next. 
and then come out with this one is most likely. All right, I'm going to play a little bit more and then wrap up. I'm going to play something that I've been playing with Tony Trishka, one of the songs he wrote, and it's the fiddle part for Fox Chase. There's a long instrumental part on that song. It's a really cool song. Brittany Haas played on the original. I don't play it quite like her, but I'm working on it. So here we go. My version of Fox Chase. So that's my Marcos Brazil bow and in summary, I really like it. It is very balanced feeling to me. Admittedly, I don't really know that much about different bows because I've used the same one for so long and I was ready for something new and this turned out to be the, a really good match for me. So check it out and you can try before you buy. This is not a commercial for JS Fisher. There's no, uh, there's no financial interest on my part. I just had a good experience there and I want to share that. So you can try their uh, bow lending program or the, their bow trial program and see what you like if you can find one of these. I think this might have been the last one he had in stock. And as I mentioned, they're not importing a lot of new ones right now, if any at all. So a good balanced bow. I've been really happy with it. I like the sound it makes in, with my rosin and with the rosin that came on it. And I will be trying the... Leatherwood Bespoke Supple Recipe, as I mentioned, there's going to be a review coming up and I'll be trying it at my gigs this weekend unless I put it on and just really hate it. So I've got four gigs in two days this weekend and I'll really get to know that rosin. So that's it. The Marcos Brazil Bow. This one built by and again, uh, I keep saying Marcos Brazil, the Arcos Brazil Bow. Marcos is the guy that made this one. So reach out if you have questions, everybody. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this kind of video. And I will see you all in the next one. Oh, and sign up for the Chop Shop and sign up for the Rosin Getaway down below. And I will see you in class. Bye.